You're right, Tamiya, I'm average Joe. If you're anything like me, you'll hate painting MDF, especially the edges. It just drinks up paint like nobody's business. So I took a bunch of your suggestions for better ways to paint the edge of MDF, and I'm gonna be putting them to the test in this video. I've even made a fancy chart to track it all. So I've got all the methods we're gonna be trying out. I've got how much it costs, how long it takes, how many coats it needs, and then I'll be rating the actual quality of the finish at the end as well. So I'll stick around and let's find out once and for all what's the best way to paint MDF. I'm going to be going through each of the suggestions one by one and trying them out. You'll see names popping up on screen and those are the people who suggested that particular method. But first of all, let's probably start with what I'll consider to be the easiest one. Let's try an iron and a blowtorch. The suggestion for this method was to seal the MDF with heat. I had suggestions of using an iron and suggestions of using a blowtorch, so I'll try both of those techniques out. The left side will be for the iron and the right side will be for the blowtorch. The iron is set to a high heat and the steam function is off. It feels a lot flatter but still quite furry, not as bad as before though. Obviously you need to be careful when using a blowtorch like this, I do have an extinguisher on hand just in case. Now it just needs sanding. Sanding with 240 grit paper does smooth both methods really well, but it could do with another coat of heat I reckon. A quick sanding again with 240 grit, and I'm going to say that's ready for paint. So that's both the iron and the blowtorch method tested. This is ready for paint, but let's crack on with the other suggestions. Next I'll test the edge banding. It was suggested to use paint ready edge banding, so that's what I've got here. It just needs cut into length with some scissors and then it can be applied with the iron. I've never used edge banding before, but it feels like it goes on really easily. It does need trimming though. You can get specific tools for this job, but I'm just going to use a sharp knife and maybe a chisel if need be. Now I like sanding with 240 grit just to remove the sharp edges and to make the edge banding flush. That's ready for paint now. Next, let's test wood filler. There was also a suggestion to use car body filler, so I bought this two part wood filler to hopefully offer a bit of a middle ground between the two suggestions. Following the instructions for mixing the filler, and it says you have 10 minutes of working time. Seems easy enough to apply, although I can see it taking some practice to get an even layer over a larger area. It's taken half an hour to dry, and a light sanding with 240 grit is all that's needed now and it's ready for paint. I had a suggestion to try spackle, which I believe in the UK we would know as polyfiller. That's what I found online anyway, so I hope it's right. A putty knife makes it quite easy to apply. Larger areas may be awkward to keep it even though. It's taken an hour to dry and now it's ready for sanding with 240 grit. That's ready for paint. The next suggestion is actually one I suggested myself. Eggshell paint is my go-to as it's really thick which I think does a great job of sealing the MDF. Applying it with a foam roller is simple, although it can be thinned down and sprayed too. The first coat has taken half an hour to dry. It can now be sanded with 240 grit and get a second coat applied. The second coat took half an hour to dry too, so after a final sanding with 240 grit, it's ready for paint. I've got a lot of suggestions for acrylic primer. I've never used an acrylic based primer before, so it'll be interesting to see how it performs. It goes on easily with a roller, but it can be sprayed too. The first coat took half an hour to dry, so a quick sanding with 240 grit and it's time for another coat. The second coat has taken half an hour to dry too, so after another light sanding with 240 grit, it's ready for paint. Let's test the PVA glue suggestion next. I was recommended to water down the PVA glue to the consistency of milk, so I'll test that but I'll also test neat PVA glue too, and we'll see if there's any difference. The watered down PVA glue is soaking in really quickly and taking quite a while to cover the surface. The neat PVA glue isn't soaking in as much, so it's a little quicker to apply, but not by much. The first coat for both methods has taken an hour and a half to dry and still feels really rough, even after sanding with 240 grit. Time for a second coat. The second coat took one hour to dry this time, after sanding, it feels like it needs another coat. 
The third coat dried in half an hour, but still not feeling as though it's sealed, so I'll give it one more coat. This fourth coat has taken half an hour to dry too. After sanding, it feels better, but still not great in my opinion, but I'll stop at four coats because it's already taken ages, and I'll say it's ready for paint. MDF sealer was the next suggestion. I have used this in the past and haven't had great results. I'll save you some time on this one though, because it followed the same pattern as the PVA glue. Same drying times, and same amount of coats needed. I will say that the MDF sealer feels a lot smoother than the PVA glue though, so that's something of note. After four coats, sanding between each coat, it's ready for paint. As a control, I'll also try just paint, and we'll see how much of a benefit the previous methods are. I know the choice of paint is going to be different for everyone, so I opted to use a high gloss spray paint. This one is actually recommended for MDF on the can. I'm thinking high gloss should show the biggest variation in finish, but also being spray paint, I won't have an issue of brush marks or marks left by a roller. I'm giving the control test 4 coats of paint and I'll class those as the undercoats. This will hopefully make things fair with the other methods. Each coat of spray paint took half an hour to dry. These coats were sanded with 240 grit between each application. After the 4 undercoats, it's ready for the top coats. Before we apply the top coat of paint, I just want to put on screen some honourable mentions of other methods I didn't actually get chance to try out. It's finally time to add the first top coat of paint to all of the methods. Now that the first coat of paint's dry, I'm going to sand them all to 240 grit. I'm going to be using some clean sandpaper this time, and then they'll get a final coat. I'm going to keep it to two coats for the finishing coat of paint, because that tends to be the norm, and I think any more is just a bit of an excess. So we'll get a good comparison between each of the different methods to see what kind of finish it gives. Right, so they've all had two top coats of paint now, they're all dry, let's bring you in for a closer look and let's inspect the finish. Right, the iron and blowtorch method, I was really looking forward to trying this, I didn't hold out much hope, and after I actually did it, they felt really smooth, like silky smooth, but as you can see, as soon as I've applied the paint, it kind of shows that it's not great, and they both feel quite rough now as well, I sanded between the coats of paint, but it's still furred up, so it's almost as if it had no effect. Once it was actually sealed, like the iron was put on and the blowtorch, it felt silky smooth. Put the paint on and it's obviously wet it and made the MDF go all furry again. So this, I don't know, I'm going to have to say zero out of five stars because you'd have to do something else other than just the iron and blowtorch. So not so good. The edge banding as expected, silky smooth to the touch really glossy surface really impressed with it i can't see or make out any kind of pitting it's it's a perfect coverage so for this i'm really gonna have to say it's five out of five stars for this this one's brilliant the wood filler has really impressed me it feels silky smooth to the touch and the surface is looking great really glossy but you can still see some banding and i believe that may be where the MDF has started to come through from the filler itself. So perhaps I should have done a slightly thicker coating of the wood filler and sanded it back down so it was all completely even and smooth. That might be my mistake. So I'm gonna give this four out of five stars. Really impressed with that. Now the spackle or polyfiller feels, it feels quite rough even after the sanding and the layers of paint, the surface it kind of it's not as rough as just raw mdf obviously but it has got some kind of texture to it the gloss effect is a lot duller as well it's not as glossy as i would have liked and on the edges i can see raw mdf coming through that's obviously where i've either sanded too much or not applied the polyfiller in the right places 
but that kind of goes hand in hand with actually applying it. So for this one, I'm really gonna have to give it one out of five stars. I think it's only fair for this kind of finish. Now the eggshell paint, this was the one that I thought was gonna be the best. It does feel, it feels really smooth, but the surface has got a lot of eggshell effect to be expected, kind of orange peel in kind of texture, and you can still see some of the white undercoat layers of the eggshell paint showing through, so this would have needed another light sanding and some more coats of paint, but I stopped at the two and it showed, so I'm gonna give this two out of five stars. Now the acrylic primer, it feels smooth in places to the touch, but there are some areas where I can actually feel the pitting coming through from the MDF. It's got a decent coverage, it has got a nice gloss shine to it, but again, I can really see kind of a, an orange peel kind of effect with it. So I was hoping it would be a little bit smoother, but it's still a pretty good finish. So I'll say three out of five stars. So looking at the PVA, it looks pretty much similar on both sides. Both the watered down side and the neat side looks pretty much the same. Maybe the watered down side has a little bit more pitting. It definitely feels a bit rougher to the neat side, but both of them really close. So perhaps if you was making a decision between the two, I can't see much benefit from putting the PVA on neat. And of course it'll go a lot further if you water it down. So out of the two, the water down is probably the way to go. But overall, looking at this finish, I'll give it two out of five stars. The MDF sealer feels really smooth, but it looks quite pitted. It hasn't got a nice even surface. I can see some spots here and there that is pretty pitted and you can kind of feel the MDF coming through. So it hasn't sealed it completely, but it's done quite a decent job. I'm gonna say three out of five stars. Right, the control one. This one has only had the Rust-Oleum mold paint applied for both the undercoats and the top coat. I did four coats for the undercoat, so it is using hell of a lot of paint, but the surface is better than I expected. I wouldn't really be happy with how this is because there are some pitting and there's quite a bit of dents as well. It is quite smooth to the touch and it has got some gloss, but I would have to be applying a couple more coats, I feel, for this. So I'm gonna give it three out of five stars purely based on it's a better finish than I expected and there isn't any other steps to do but it used a lot of paint so we'll keep that in mind. Right it's time for the final verdict now I want to be looking at what's the cheapest method what's the quickest method and what gives the best finish so if we start with the cheapest I do want to quickly mention I had a little bit of awkwardness trying to consider the pricing for the iron the blowtorch and the edge banding because it's not a liquid I can't really say a price per 100ml obviously the iron will incur a cost it'll be electricity costs but I can see it being fractions of the penny so I'll put zero just keep that in mind for the gas for the blowtorch Found that awkward as well. I first thought about comparing it with the spray paint. It's a gas canister as well, so kind of. But obviously the gas I can see going a lot further than the liquid paint in the spray can. So rather than trying to play around with that kind of stuff, I just put the full price for the gas canister so you get the idea of that. And then when we get to the edge banding, if you buy a bigger roll, I only brought 7.5 meters. I'm sure it'll be a little bit cheaper than I got it for. But again, I don't know how to really compare it with how far 100 mils of paint will get you compared to a roll of edge banding kind of thing. So I've just put the full price for that as well. So you get a better idea of the cost involved. But as you can see from the chart as a whole, you're able to see that the iron comes in the cheapest at relatively no cost. But the finish isn't great on it. So if you start looking to other ones that are cheaper, you're looking at the PVA glue. And again, I'm not too keen on how the PVA glue came out, especially when you look at the drying times involved and just how long it takes in general. So if I was to make some kind of recommendation, I would say that the acrylic primer is your cheapest method when you consider how many coats you'll be using and how long it will take. But as you can see on the chart, make the decision for yourself. What do you think is the cheapest? Is it worth being the cheapest? You pick. I also wanted to be looking at what's the quickest method. What's the best method if you just want to get the job done as quick as possible with a high quality finish? Now if you look at the charts again, the quickest by far is the iron and the blowtorch method, but the finish at the end isn't great, so you'll be spending a lot longer on your top coat of paint. So instead, let's have a look at the edge banding. Still a really quick time, nice and easy to apply, sets instantly, sands really quickly, can be easily trimmed to size, and of course it gives a fantastic finish as well. So if you're looking for a really fast option, Edge banding's the way to go. 
the last thing I wanted to look at was the quality of the finish. Doesn't matter how long it takes to apply, doesn't matter how much it costs, just what gives the best finish on the Edge of MDF. And by far, in my opinion, the Edge Banding wins out. I gave it the highest star rating. Next up, we got the Wood Filler, which is really close second, but I think there's a benefit between the two. If you've got a flat Edge of MDF, Edge Banding is the way to go. It's quick to apply, you haven't got to wait for it to dry, easy to trim, gives a top quality finish. But if you've got a profile on your MDF, maybe you've got a round over or a slight chamfer, that's going to be really hard to apply edge banding to. So a wood filler in that situation will be a lot easier to apply and it will still give you a fantastic finish. You will obviously be wanting to take cost involved, whatever you decide to do, but if we're looking at just the quality of finish, it's got to go to edge banding and a really close second to wood filler. I suppose that just leaves me to pick out what finishing method I'll personally be using. I'm probably going to be switching between three in particular. I really love the edge banding and I love the wood filler. There is a cost involved though and it is quite expensive so being just a little DIY hobbyist I don't really want to be spending too much but if I've got a situation where the edge is going to be a prominent feature of a piece of furniture of something that's important that will be the go-to route no matter what you want the high quality finish and that's what I'll use either the edge banding or the wood filler but for everyday stuff if the MDF edge is going to be slightly seen here and there but it's not too critical I'll be using the acrylic primer. I was really holding out hot for the eggshell, it's what I've used for ages, but the acrylic primer, it's cheaper and gets a really similar result, if not even better than the eggshell, especially going on the star rating I gave it. So thank you all for watching. I hope you found this video interesting and I hope you found it helpful. I hope it's going to help you make a decision how to finish your MDF in the future. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give it a thumbs down. Don't forget to get subscribed, click the subscribe button and click the bell icon next to it so you get a notification when I upload a new video via email or a pop-up on your phone. Thank you all again for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.